Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our SU25T Frogfoot and we're looking at the cockpit controls. Now note at this point this is a low fidelity model. That means the accuracy of the cockpit or the interactability of the cockpit is low. So in a high fidelity aircraft, uh, which basically the more expensive ones, um, we have basically everything, every button is pushable and you can use the mouse here to click on every button. Everything is interactable and model. In a low fidelity aircraft like this, only about 20 to 30% is actually modelled and not much of it is actually interactive. But some of it is, and so we're going to go through that today. So we we'll start off on this left, left panel. Nothing here is interactive on this left panel that I'm trying to frame with my mouse cursor, including this chap here. The only thing that moves is the thrust stick here. When I move my thrust stick forward and backwards, that is modelled. Um, let's just sign this lot off. Everything I'm framing here all along this right bank, nothing as far as I'm aware is modelled or is interactive. Okay, And now what we're going to look at is um, the front panel and the HUD up here. Everything I'm framing at the moment, about 80% of this is interactive in one way or another. So let's start at the bottom left. <clears throat> I'm framing here the weapons control panel here. Uh, now this is interactive and uh, to an extent at least and I'm going to go over that in more detail a bit later in this video but uh, we'll come back to that. Our gear, our gear lever here, if it is up, then it is in the, the gear is in the up position, and if it's down, the gear is in the down position, and we do that by pressing the G key. These chaps here are the automatic pilot control lights. Um, these are different elements of the automatic pilot, the autopilot control system, and I've got a full video of that in the SU25T playlist, so I won't go over it any further now. Here is the flight configuration warning panel or situation panel. <clears throat> if these are highlighted here, then the air brakes are extended. If these are here highlighted, then the flaps are in takeoff position. If here and here, then the flaps are in landing position. If these are in here, then the gear is out. And I think this is the hydraulic system here. So if one, if the hydraulics are mm, in action at the moment, say moving the gear up or down, I believe this hydraulic lamp will be on. Next, we go right to our barometric altimeter. Around the outside is meters barometric times 100, so 100 meters, 900 meters, 1,000 meters. Um, here is our total um, barometric altitude in meters, 1,970 at the moment. Our QFE is here, but it is not configurable as far as I'm aware. Here is our radio altimeter, uh, it's starting at zero and going up to 1,500 meters. Here is our indicated airspeed meter, our speedometer if you like. Uh, we've got one hundreds of kilometers per hour around the outside, so we're currently 580 kilometers per hour indicated airspeed. We've got three markers here, now it doesn't actually say what they are in the manual, but I'm going to guess at that there, 800 is maximum speed kilometers per hour. This I imagine is optimal cruise speed, and this I believe would be maximum speed for having the flaps and gear down. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, that's all. I, that's my best guess. That's all I can do on that. On the left half of this, we have an angle of attack meter, currently reading at about five degrees angle of attack. On the right here is a uh, accelerometer going up to ten degrees plus, and it doesn't have any negative um, degrees out of interest. So I'm not sure why it doesn't have any negative, but it's in the plus only. So we can go up to ten or eleven Gs there, which is a bit silly. And as you can see, the dangerous it gets it, 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 that we should do no more than six point five Gs. Basically, it's saying there. Okay. Master caution here, I believe that works. Next, we're going to jump up to the HUD. The HUD is this heads-up display. It conveys all sorts of information to us. I've got a full video on this in the SU25T playlist, so I'm not going to go over it other than to say we've got the basic modes here. We've, if we press the one button, we've got uh, navigation modes. We press six, we've got air-to-air -air modes. Press seven, we've got air-to-ground modes or attacking air-to-ground. So that's all I want to go over just to show the HUD is there. Okay, next uh, we have warning lights here and here. I believe they work, but I'm not sure what they are warning of. Here we have ADI, Artificial Horizon. This tells you whether you are wings level, so whether you're rolling left and right, and whether you're pitching up and down. We also have some in guidance information here. We have this line here, known as a localizer, gives us guidance information on ILS approach and INS navigation. So this tells us our azimuth, um, guides us on our azimuth of navigation. All this stuff I'm telling you about navigation, I've got a full navigation video in the playlist, so 
if you want a proper description, go there. And here we have the glide slope here, which tells us navigation guidance uh, regards our height. Other than that, not um, other than that, we can't adjust it. Here we have a your slip gauge. Here we have a HSI horizontal situation indicator. This is for navigation basically we've got our distance here in kilometers to our next point of interest usually a waypoint sometimes an airfield here we have our current selected course our course is not selectable but it is driven by the INS waypoint system and is configurable um, in the mission editor by sending waypoints here we've got this one here is our course needle this one here is our I don't know the proper name of it but it is our uh, essentially our guide needle for our point of interest are uh, the green one here for our waypoint or airport or whatever our point of interest is selected is ILS information here we've got localizer again and glide slope here um, some flags here that we're not going to go through again this we go through all this in more detail in the navigation tutorial so just to say that it, it's there and it, it's configurable next vertical speed indicator if the needle is going up then if this measures our speed our vertical speed and if we're diving this measures our vertical speed downwards here is a backup slip indicator. Here is our tach me tachometer. It is the RPM of the engine times 10%, so 80%, 100%. There are two needles on top of each other, uh, and each needle is that particular engine. Lights, indicator lights here, uh, they are for engine starting, I believe. But, uh, I, I, I don't really know the warning lights in issue 25, but I think they're for engine starting. Left and right engine here, AGT temperature times 100 degrees center centigrade. Um, so they're about what, 650 each at the moment. The red is obviously the danger. Um, I think that's measured either at the turbine or the uh, or rear of the turbine. Fuel gauge next. Never fully understand the fuel gauge in this plane. What I can tell you is that we've got the amount of fuel in white here. Uh, we've currently got 4,000, that is 4,000 uh, kilograms of fuel. Why it shows it on the left and the right, I've never understood. Uh, I initially thought it may be this is the fuel in the left tank, that's in the right tank, but that doesn't appear to be accurate. One of these, this one here, is the total. Um, and that's it. If I had fuel tanks on, extra external fuel tanks, then um, it would be a little bit higher. And as it runs down to zero, then obviously you're running out of fuel. Warning lights here, unsure if they work because I haven't been able to test them fully. They are warning lights or indicator lights for different fuel tanks when certain fuel tanks are empty. And that there is a bingo warning, I believe. Here is the predicted time at current course speed, heading at what, etc. that we can do with the current amount of fuel. So we can do 370 kilometers that's extremely ambitious or does that mean 37 no 373 weapons ordnance panel we're going to go over that a bit later so just accept it's there for now trim indicators trim neutral indicators i uh, can't really see them because the sticks in the way but our three lights one for your one for roll one for pitch i believe it means once your trim is centered and neutral then the green light will show uh built-in test indicator here believe it is interactive it tells you the results of built-in tests um yeah, test for testing various systems. It's all in Russian, so good luck using it. Um, indicator slash warning lights here. I don't know which lamp actually means which, but just to acknowledge that they are there. Hydraulic pressure indicator for various systems. I'm not sure which system is which. I don't speak Russian, and as far as I'm aware, there is no English cockpit available for this plane. So they just acknowledge that they are four different hydraulic systems, and that is the pressure of the system. Chronometer there. Um, the stopwatch features and stuff like that don't work as far as I'm aware it just works as a clock and that does work RWR radar warning warning receiver this tells you about radar systems that are active within a detectable range of your aircraft I've got a full video about that in the SU-25 T playlist we won't go any further but that comes to the end of what is um, is is configurable interactive uh, so we've got the, the targeted view screen here in the SU-25T model we've got here, I believe this only works for the Schwal weapon system and this is covered more in the weapons tutorial that we have in the playlist. Now let's go and re-examine the two that we've passed over. First of all, the ordnance indicator here. So here are all of the stations on the plane that are available. If we look outside, we can see there are stations currently. They have all sorts of ordnance at them. So that's one, two, three, four, five, it's ten, isn't it? Ten stations. Um, the yellow light is just telling us that there is weapons available and, and there are weapons available on that station. If they were blanked out, then that would mean that that is an empty station. Green lights are weapons, weapons go and selection lights. We'll go through that in a second. Just to say here, uh, when we select a certain weapon, its type will be shown here. 
and our amount of gun ammo in quarters is shown here. So let's just uh, do that. Unpause. Going to select our air to ground. And we're going to select a weapon. Um, B, we've got, we've got some bombs selected there. Our S5 rocket selected there. So why don't we go with that? Again, all this information about weapons is in the weapons tutorial. I'm not going to go over it now. So I've selected uh, uh, rockets, and with these pods are now these pylons are now highlighted. These four to show that they are selected and they are ready for use. They have ammunition in them. So that's that. The type selected here, HPC. I don't speak Russian, but HPC apparently means rockets. And there are four or five other, you know, bombs. Uh, air-to-ground missiles, air-to-air missiles, all those things, but they're Russian, so I've given up trying to learn it, basically. Gun ammo, uh, let's see if we can get that to change. So we can see it's now three quarters empty, and uh, for some reason they work in quarters, the gun, gun ammo on the Russian planes, so uh, if it got to zero out of four, we would be empty. Uh, that's it for this panel. Next is the weapons control system panel. So what we're interested in here is if we want to drop our bombs, in fact, let's go and select our bombs. So let me just get this going. Uh, we've now got our bombs selected. Those inner bombs we've got are eight times 100 kilo bombs. We could drop them one by one uh, in our standard configuration, or we could drop them in what we call a salvo or a ripple. That would be where we press the button once and hold it and a whole ripple of them will drop. And we can control that information here. Here, now not an SU-25, 5T pilot, so I've never actually used this before, but this is the salvo selector here. This determines how many bombs we're going to drop in the salvo, and we're going to use, uh, what is it, left shift and space and left control and space to change that knob. Uh, sorry, just left control and space cycles through the knob. So that controls that. Now, I forget now whether that means drop like two bombs at once or two bombs in total on the salvo. Um, I've covered this more in more detail in a weapons tutorial, so I'm just trying to show how to turn the knob, basically. This here is the interval selector. Um, so, for instance, if we wanted to drop bombs with a certain interval between them during a ripple, 0.1 seconds, 0.2 seconds, we use the V and control and V keys to... So that's V. Uh, sorry, shift and V. That's shift and V to go back there. Uh, and as well as that, there are other functions here. Uh, for instance, controlling gun pods, if you've got gun pods on. Controlling uh, dispensers, if you've got dispensers. But we're not going to go any further into it than that. Just to say that here are the controls that do that. And uh, those are the buttons you press to do that. Right, so that's the weapon systems control covered. That is the ordnance control covered. And I think that's everything. My apologies if I missed everything, missed anything. I don't uh, fly this very often, but I think we've got everything there. So, I hope that helps and see you later.